So I did a webhook video and I had people ask me recently or somebody um, whether N8N can do APIs. And I think I should have named this APIs because webhooks we think is a pattern that uh, you send a message to and it comes back later to you with a message. And uh, I guess that makes sense. Um, but what I'm going to show you now is in a recent video, I built this sharing uh, site so you can share a password with someone. And it's basically using um, an ADEN, just like the other video, as an API. So um, in this case, an ADEN will, uh, let me filter these down. An ADEN will get, let's do create first. It will create with this API. It will get with this API. And, uh, and then later on, it does something else on API related. But you see, we can have an index. Uh, we could do updates um, if we had a system that needed to do that. So I'm just going to show really quick how um, we can use N8N to make an API. So again, the site is this one. When you send a message to it, uh, it's going to just create or post, as we're all used to, um, the particular item to N8N. Uh, so you see it's just a normal post command. Uh, the one before it, sorry. Um, I wish I could say I wish I saved the memory. The one before it was a post, and then it redirects itself to do a get. So really, really, really that simple. Um, so let's go recreate that API. So this is the one we're going to recreate. Again, we just start with a webhook. So let's go to uh, let's move this guy over here, and let's go to um, another. Add, and we're going to make the webhook. So this is the starting point. And we'll move me out of the way. And we want to trigger on a call. So in this case, the webhook is going to be a post. Oops. But you see you have all these options here. And I'm going to using response with webhook node. So I'm not going to respond immediately, which is the big difference here. So say using response with webhook node. Now you can see we could do authentication. Of course, that would mean the front end app would have to have um, ability to store credentials in a secure way. And we can actually do another thing I was having trouble with was cores. So you can actually do something there with cores. Uh, I actually did it at the N8N level. Again, just Claude helped me do it. <clears throat> All right. So now let's see here. Um, we have our post and we're pretty much done. Uh, I'll just call it create uh, secret. And let's go grab Postman for a moment. And I should have prepared for that ahead of time. One moment. And we're just going to use Postman. Uh, not that we need to, but it's just easy. We could even just use curl, honestly. So that'll be a post. And the testing URL will be that. And in this case, I decided that the body um, would be like this. So they're going to send a uh, text. That's all they're going to send, text, something to save. So in doing that now, uh, I can see this API working. Now, I can't see it working yet because I'm in test mode, and uh, we have to set it to listen. So now we get an error because I haven't finished setting up the other webhook. You'll see that in a moment, the responding one. But we get data coming in. Um, so we got to go finish it. But actually, I want to remove that so you can see a little tr uh, trick here to save a moment of time. So let's go send that again. And so we can pin that. So we could just be here and just keep working through this flow. All right. So now we are going to add our edit field. So in this case, um, I did this. Let me see if I can just grab this guy. Copy and paste. So I just grab an edit field. And um, this one, like, you know, it's just a way of taking all of this and conforming it. I really don't need to. Um, so I could have skipped through this one. And you'll see why in a moment, because I'm going to take the, the, the soup of haste. And I'm going to now save this into the database. And I'm saving it to my ideas project. I'm saving it as a row. I'm going to create it and not update it. 
And then we're going to use the table shares and we're going to take the string for the previous one. And if I pop this open, I sometimes can see the history where before a moment ago I couldn't. And so now we are just saying, hey, give me that text body right here. So if we were to just remove that for a moment, and drag that over, we see it. So really that simple. So now we have an API. We have a moment where we can conform it if we need to, but we don't. I might get rid of this. Uh, maybe I'll do it just now just so we can see it more clearly. All right. And, oh, this guy's looking for something. So I was passing an IP uh, to track that as well. So if we pop this one open, um, we can see, I don't know if I get that because I'm using, yeah, I do. Um, let's get rid of this. Let's just throw that in there. That's interesting. Okay. So we have that and pretty much from this point, it's going to save that. So we click that and it saved it and it returns it as the ID. So we can pin that. So now we can add the respond to webhook and then we'll, we'll, we'll break this open a little bit more. So we're going to go respond to, and then we're going to go, uh, respond. Let's see if I can find it. All right. And then we're going to say, okay, respond to, uh, let me grab that. So many ways to do it. I'm going to say with the JSON, with JSON, and then I'm going to put the JSON I want there. And, and once again, we're saying, you know what? Um, I want the JSON that came from Superbase. So Superbase is making um, a UID for us. And it looks like it just put it in the wrong place. So now we take the Superbase UUID. And again, which is really nice, you get to see all of the uh, processes or nodes before this. So you can grab from multiple uh, processes. But you'll see uh, Superbase returns a UUID that we can use to return back. So it's really that easy. So now uh, let's save that. Um, what we'll do is we'll publish it and then I'll go grab this. Now I have a little error in my system, so I'm going to fix that and get rid of that. All right. So now we get the UUID. So now our system knows to, uh, our, our UI knows that when it gets the UUID, it's going to then redirect the experience back there to that UUID. So for us, that's a very common pattern. Uh, so in that case, um, if we go to our, um, our second one, let's go grab the second one. So here's get a share. So let's move that over. Um, we're going to make another CRUD. Uh, so let's just go make another uh, add. So this guy, we're doing the same type of thing. We're going to say webhook. Uh, let's see, it's a trigger webhook and it's a get because we want them to send that over to us as a get more common, normal crud stuff. Um, now here I had to do this, I think, and we're going to do return to respond to, but we won't do it right away because I want to see some, um, data coming in and then let's grab some JSON here. What is it? Oh, all right. That's all it is. Okay. So basically all we're doing is listening and going back to Postman. And let's make one more here. Um, do that as a get. And it's not a get, it doesn't have a body because it's a get. But what we're going to do is send a uh, UUID equals. And we're going to send that one we just got. So let me go grab that one. And I probably had it in there. Oh, it's right here, actually. All right. So we sent it, but nothing's happening. But we got it here, so we can kind of save this. All right. So now that we've triggered the testing flow and we've pinned the data, we can move on to the next one now. Again, I'm going to skip what I had before, which is that edit field. But the edit field is nice because you can tweak the content before you try saving it. In this case, we're just going to say, hey, uh, go get the row from Superbase or um, Postgres. You know, you could use either. 
and um, go get it. It's my shares table by UUID. And we take the UUID they gave us and we query for it. If we don't find it, I don't really have an if statement for that. Um, I just didn't bother. It's That's lazy. And But you could do something with a switch statement. Actually, I think a switch statement would be better because you're going to do a found it, expired, found it, not expired, didn't find it. So you have multiple ways you could deal with a particular uh, route. And it's actually, it's really neat. I mean, you can do a lot there. So we're going to say, um, and I think I copied it over. Almost messed up my other one. All right. So this one was pretty easy, I think. It seems to work. We're saying, hey, Superbase gave us the created ad. If it's older than an hour, it's just, um, uh, it's okay. If it's new, it's if it's less than an hour old, it's okay. Uh, otherwise, it's not. So we have true, false. Uh, and, then, and then we um, just take the respond to webhook um, for the good response and we let's see if we can show this here it is well we can say I don't know if the if statement returns anything but basically I can always go back into the chain of nodes and grab something there so you see I respond consistently you know with a normal API with normal JSON then if it's a uh, expired we can just respond with that so let's watch that work. Let's see. So that would be expired. And I should actually honestly return a full um, full JSON. And that UUID, uh, it doesn't really make sense. I would have to grab it from the other one. So uh, all right. So let's see. Let's save that but and activate it. So we can just go grab this and do that and then we will I think this guy oh it's already test one so you can just remove the test and that's fine because it's active so now when we send this to our test one um, cannot be started let's make sure I get the right URL let's do that and then let's fix my silly port bug let me send it. Uh, could not be started. Okay, let's go look. Oh, right, right. Well, I don't know why. Let's see. We we'll respond with a webhook node. We forgot to. I forgot to show you that. So now we have a regular GET API, and we can look here and we see uh, the errors are here. And so again, debugging is pretty nice. Let's see what it says. Using response. Yeah. Okay. So probably just I didn't have that set up. Yeah, I had them here, but not there. Okay. Again, really nice. You can see the executions, and then you could um, you can even bring them over in the editor, and it will move the data over. It's just really very handy. So this guy um, worked; it was active. There's the UID, and we get our response, and then the UI can show that. So if we copy that over in the UI, I think we already saw this, but you just see it; it works. So you know, it is a uh, it works. I mean, it's an API. You could do so much more in this particular flow. Um, for example, in the create part of this, um, you could have it go to a queue. So let me grab that one moment. So here's the create one. Um, you could say, okay, I want it to go into a queue. I want it to go back to them as a yes, everything's good. I could throw it into an SQS, right? I could put it into an S3 bucket. One of the more common ones, because all that stuff's kind of, you know, geeky. Uh, you know, Google Sheets, right? Um, another one is the, you get into this um, AI agent, and this is really powerful where you can actually, you know, do something with the data before you put it into the database or as you respond to the person. Um, and I'll cover this in a different video. But that really shows you how it's just APIs. You can create these APIs and um, use NAN to do CRUD, um, even simple stuff like this, get, post, whatever. So even though we think webhooks as what they are traditionally are, which is give it something, 
it will send something back later, uh, which I do as well with this. Um, you can see, you can just use it for just regular API. All right, uh, remember to subscribe and uh, share. All right, thank you.